News on uh, one of the Fang names, Netflix, saying in a tweet last night, the newest season of Stranger Things has broken its record uh, for, view <clears throat> for viewers in the first four days of release with almost 41 million household uh, accounts watching. But Netflix continues to selectively release viewership data. Uh, does the streaming giant have more to gain by hiding its full figures? Join us now on the Squawk Newsline, Piper Jeffrey. Uh, actually, it's Piper Sandler now. Uh, analyst Mike Olson. Did you see that news, Mike, or did you just wake up? <laughs> no, I, I did see that news. Good morning. When do we need to change it on your uh, We haven't changed it yet. We'll change it uh, when it closes. So is, is there anything to this? And, and I will tell you that, I don't know, I tried to watch that Jennifer Aniston movie. I, I, that, was, that supposedly was going to do $120 million in, in theaters. There's no way that those viewership numbers accurately reflected what, uh, what that would have done in a, in a commercial release. What about here? Yeah, it's hard to say. You know, this is a different way of measuring audience. Um, but what I can say for sure is this is just another example of how Netflix is using data to really predict the content that the user base is going to be most engaged in. And really, an, an engaged user base sticks with the service and is willing to absorb future price increases. So it's certainly a good thing. I mean, you've got more than 25% of all Netflix subscribers have now watched some portion of Stranger Things Season 3, which is, which is quite remarkable. That really is. I know my son uh, he has been uh, watching that already. So it, it, it is a big advantage to get that uh, immediate feedback that a lot of media entities uh, don't have. And that can help with future uh, content and, and commitments and everything else. That's a big advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one interesting thing, you mentioned murder mystery and maybe the difference between this and the recent success of that um, Netflix original is murder mystery was obviously an entirely new content and the company was correctly able to kind of craft something that subscribers wanted to watch. This is an example of, of the company using their data to determine which existing series to continue to invest in. And obviously, Stranger Things is one of those. And, and there's more to come you know, later this year with a new season of Orange is the New Black and then a couple new original films, The Irishman from Martin Scorsese and a Michael Bay film called uh, Six Underground. Mike, um, no doubt Netflix uses uh, the user data knowing what people's habits are, but they also serve up this show uh, aggressively to almost everybody, right? I mean, they kind of like put it right behind whatever you just watched in the queue. And that's why I wonder their use of publicizing these numbers almost seems almost just like pure tweaking of the competition, PR, because all that matters is subscription numbers. We're going to get those every quarter. That's what, the, that's what investors are paying for. Uh, so along the way, Netflix just kind of gets to, to boast uh, and use its own metrics. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I think it's um, good from a competitive standpoint. And also, I just think it's, it's good marketing. Like, if you are not a Netflix subscriber and you're seeing that, um, you know, such massive numbers of, of your, your peers are watching this content, it may um, create a, a fear of missing out situation. And so I think it's good marketing, but it's also um, definitely uh, good from a competitive standpoint for for one thing, it's good from a competitive standpoint to attract talent. Um, as, as you know, they've used these metrics to attract talent uh, in, in a way that's been successful over the, over the last couple of years. Mike, how do they calculate uh, if viewers actually watch Stranger Things? I mean, how many minutes do I have to watch in order to be counted as a viewer that's watched Stranger Things or any other show that, they, that they're talking about? Yeah, the, the benchmark they've used for that is 70%. So if you've watched 70% of any content, so in this case, it would have been 70% of an episode when they were talking about the 40 plus million viewers of, of any episode, and then 70% um, of, uh, or actually they said the full season for the, the season. And then for like a murder mystery, it's 70% of the full film. Everybody's going to be in this business eventually, Mike. I'm wondering, is this helping with a little bit of a moat, do you think, for Netflix? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think as you look out over the next you know, a few quarters and years, um, there's, there's certainly going to be more competition with Disney and Warner and others, but at, at the same time, there's also going to be a lot of content dollars um, shifting from, uh, at least consumer spend dollars shifting from traditional TV over to streaming services. And I think people are going to be willing to subscribe to multiple different streaming services as a larger percent of that pie shifts over to, uh, to those streaming aggregators. Has anyone told uh, Jaffray yet that he's, you know... <laughs> I don't know. Have they broken the news? 
I mean, it, it's happened to all of the firms. They always lose. Uh, they got to lose a name. Otherwise, it's too long. It's Piper Sandler. I mean, the, the whole Jaffrey family is like, what? And uh, O'Neill. And O'Neill. Right? Yeah, and O'Neill. Yeah, They're yeah, both mourning. Right? They're off with Kidder and Peabody and all the rest. And, and E.F. <laughs> Hutton. And E.F. Hutton, uh, you don't even remember those. Anyway, thanks, Mike. You're handling it well. We'll, we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Take care. All right.